I'm sorry, I'm not quite um, ready. Let me just, um, I've been at the uh, office and then I've just realised, I thought I was all set up and then I thought, oh no, do I need the overlocker? I do need the overlocker and it's got white on it. So bear with me, I'm just going to be thread that. What else to say hi? Ooh. Mm. Oh, it's, we're getting the snow reports coming in. That's lovely to see. Yep, we have got snow here, although it's kind of thin on the ground, but it's a little bit um, it's thin on the ground, but it's a bit um, icy, it's a bit vicious. But yeah. Oh, bless you. Yeah. Yeah, oh, Rosie's here as well. Oh, joining in. Coco's here too. Bless you. Yes, I've had a bit of a, yes, I've had a bit of a, a um, bad morning, guys. If anyone saw, I put an Instagram story up on my Lisa Comfort Home account um, the other day, um, this, about an hour ago, as I was leaving the office. Um, yeah, I've had all sorts of disaster toilet mishaps from the animals this morning to deal with, including Poppy being sick on my sofa. The whole thing was just, yeah. I was, it was by 7 a.m. I was ready to just get back into bed and give up on the day. That's how I felt this morning. But uh, since then, I've been to the office, surrounded myself with gorgeous fabrics, seen some of the team and uh, feeling better. I'm just, um, yeah, it's always a bit of a rush on a Monday. So basically, I can't do the sew along from the office because the team need to carry on working. And obviously, it makes them, they have to be quiet and it means we can't use the coffee shop printer and stuff. But I like to go in on a Monday because I meet with Alex who helps sort out, helps me with the fabrics and I also just do a nice check of all the fabrics and you'll see those videos I've put on our Sew Over It um, Instagram account with me in the office. It's always on a Monday. And uh, hi Coco. No, do not put your leg foot there. There's a knife there. Um, and, uh, but yeah, so then I... So I've got to get Jazzy to nursery in Hackney, then go drive to Bow, which is where our office is. So this is all sort of East London. And then spend a couple of hours in the office and then get back here for one. So it's always a bit of a rush. Unfortunately, at the moment, the traffic is not great, is good rather. So it's usually fine. But today is one of those days where I've just got here and I'm like, oh, oh. Anyway, I'm here now. I've managed to make myself a cup of tea as well. So all is good and so we are here guys to do the cowl neck i'm hoping we're going to get this done together but um in the hour at least most of it and then maybe just hems aren't finished but that'll be nice and i've just um we've got some gorgeous fabrics in perfect for this so there we go let me just check that's done yes few thank goodness okay so um yeah, this is the fabric that I am using. I brought some home actually of the leftover um, because I thought I'd, make, I'd really like to make a headband out of it. My hair is just awful at the moment. It's all growing out. I've got roots. I feel like we've all got bad hair at the moment, I know, but so it's, I think I need to embrace even more head, head scarves more so than ever. And I just thought this as a head scarf, let me put that color on me would be nice. Anyway, so it's this gorgeous weighted jersey. It's really lovely. I'm trying to try, I don't know how I can kind of give you guys the sort of, it's, it's quite, there's quite a lot of body to it. It's, it's not particularly fine. Um, and it's a viscose blend. And I wore a Thea dress in it. Or did we make the Thea dress together, didn't we? Yeah, I think we did. Anyway, it was from the Thea dress. Um, it's the same fabric and I've managed to get the black back in and then I've got it in this colour. We've got it in this and then also in pink in a lovely magenta and then also in a charcoal, which I've also got my eye on. I was thinking that would be nice, but I just thought this would be gorgeous um, as a top and I'm making a top version. It would be lovely as a, a dress as well, but I've been, I feel like I've got uh, quite a few dresses um, recently, so I'm, I'm up for a... Uh, a top version and um, so yes yeah, so anyway those links where I'm sure will be going up um, shortly by Rosie um, the cowl neck is just a PDF 
Guys, it's one of our very early PDFs, actually. I believe it must have come out the first year we did our PDF club, and we were releasing one a year, I think. So, anyway, um, and it, you can make it as a top, or you can make it as a dress, and when it's as a dre uh, dress, um, it's got shaping at the waist. A bit like the Salma has. Um, right, here, oh, here comes Rosie, wonderful, with all the fabrics. So we've got all these lovely plain fabrics and then I've also brought in a new, which I can't show you, it's so annoying. That's why eventually the dream would be to do the sew-alongs in the office. We're looking at maybe eventually when everyone does come back, we will need more space so we could have an extra little mini office off the side that we could then do sew-alongs in. Um, but And then I can have the bolts of the fabric with me to start the sew-along so I can show you. But anyway, we've got this lovely, um, very spring-like painterly, it's called Brush Strokes. Brushed, brush, what have I called it? Brushed, brush stroke, floral. Anyway, that's lovely. I, thought, I particularly thought that would be pretty as a top. I think it would go really well with denim, um, so with jeans. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, also up. There's a lot of fabric coming up this week, guys, on so over it. We're just having, um, sorting it all out before I came on here. And because we've got our new pattern coming out, the VIP members will be finding, thank you, Rosie, brush tape floral. Um, um, VIP members will be finding out about it very soon. Um, we will be um, on Wednesday. It's a new pattern, so we've got lots of lovely new fabrics in for that and for other bits and bobs as well. I randomly got some fabric that had just arrived for the Salma dress, which is obviously late, but really lovely sweatshirting in this gorgeous kind of tulipy flower print, it's fab. So yeah, lots of nice things coming. And usually guys, just so you know, what happens is I add some of them on Mondays for this, so you guys will get them, find out about them first. Then I usually add another batch on Tuesday and then sometimes a few more on well, Friday and then we get deliveries throughout the week so I'm keeping an eye on things that kind of come back in stock and stuff and so um, anything that comes back in stock within the week it just gets added back up so things are going on the um, website all the time and the fabric collection is building as you can see we're now doing fabrics so um, again so lots of fabrics um, are coming so that we can build up our lovely collection mm. So, the first thing we are doing, guys, is we are doing some overlocking. Um, so, I'm just checking the instructions here. Okay, from the front and the back dress, yes, we need to overlock the shoulder seams. Now, this jersey does definitely fray a little bit, so that's why I'm going to overlock it. But actually, this that I'm wearing, I might take this off actually because I'm a bit hot. Um, so, this is the cowl neck dress. Um, I put a photo of me up in it this morning amongst all my clearing up dramas. Who would know if you'd seen the photo of me on So Over It's account this morning, you'd think, oh, Lisa's having a nice morning. She's got time to take a photo. That was just me in between cleaning up sick and wee and all sorts of horrible things. Shows you that Instagram doesn't show the real life, does it? Um, anyway, so this is a cotton jersey. Um, we've still got some of this, and I'm sure Rosie can pop up a link to this as well. Um, but this is, um, you wouldn't need to overlock this. In fact, this sample hasn't been overlocked. You can just make it up really easily. Um, so, but the, um, but yeah, for this we definitely do need to because it will um, fray. So I'm just going to get my shoulder seams ready. Now it's quite hard to know what the shoulder seam is on the cowl neck because it's such a kind of, um, strange shape it sort of looks if I pull it like that it just looks like a kind of smooth um, shape and you're like well where's the shoulder seam well that's what the uh, notch is for to show you where the shoulder seam is so um, just so about three inches in from the shoulder here there is there is a notch so um, and then the same here there's a notch on the either side so that's what we need to overlock so do be careful when you're overlocking anything on the single before you've done anything with it because um, you don't want to shave off the seam allowance because then you're going to end up with... Um, whoops, it's then you're going to end up with a slightly smaller amount for when you go to break your seam allowances. So I'm just going up to that notch and then stopping. 
share some very potent look. Okay, so just that little bit there, okay? And then I'm going to do the same on here, on the other side. going to do the same up here. Sorry guys, I'm just going to snip it into this. A little bit more just to make it easy for me. Um, Now, in the instructions, it says go ahead and do the same on your side seams. However, for this, I don't see why I can't just overlock them together at the end. It's important the shoulder seams are so that you can get the neckline right. Um, they need to be done separately. But for, um, for, for, for the side seams, they don't really. You can, you'll be fine. I mean, I guess the reason why it's nice to do them separately because then you can press them open and then it's not too bulky at the hem because you're not folding you know two layers of seam allowance together and then overlocking and then folding over so if you're using a ponty then you might want to do that separately so that you're not going to get that bulk but mine is not a ponty so i'm fine i'm just going to trim off the tails i feel like i might need my glasses on my eyes are very tired oh i just put thread into my tea Eyes are tired and a bit stingy today, actually. Don't know what that's about. You like get like sweat, you know, when you've been running. I haven't been for a run this morning. Couldn't fit that in amongst all of the dramas. Um, but you, you kind of get that stingy, stingy eye. It feels a bit like that. Um, right. So this one and oh, this one. No, that's my back. No, okay, I'm just trying, I thought I trimmed everything off, but I haven't. Okay, so this was, we do the shoulder seams first, that's right, and then we're pressing the seams open, ba, 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 ba. and then we're doing the side seams. Okay, just checking that. I'm going to put this down on the floor, get my machine up. So, it really comes together very quickly, this, because there's no darts, just literally... Oh, for the bodicey bit, it's just side seams and shoulder seams. I've got myself into a complete pickle down here, just a second, guys, with all the leaves. What is going on there? Oh, there we go. <coughs> so, no, that's going to have to go away. Right, we're ready. So, shoulder seams. Make sure you've got the right side of the cloth. There's a slight kind of ribbon, very slight ribbon to this. It shows the right side. Well, that's what I use as the right side. I guess you could use the other side as the right side, but I like the, the ribbing side. Um, so we're just going to place those together. So it's just that little bit there. Shoulder seams, placing them right sides together. And then mark lining up the raw edges or sort of the notches there and then the raw edges around the armhole. And then you get this one. So how a cowl works and you'll see from the pattern is it's basically by, you can see here, putting in extra fabric. So that fabric is not going to stay like that. So it just collapses and it's cut in a way that it collapses into the cowl. I've always thought they are so elegant really really elegant it's a, such an elegant neckline especially if you, you know get it in the right fabric and i particularly like a cowl in a plain fabric i just think then it lets the shape and the drape of the fabric do all the talking mm -hmm. okay so seam allowance a centimeter and a half or five eighths of an inch mm. We haven't got any instructions to stabilise the shoulder bit here, but you can stabilise it if you want to. You just can use a bit of ribbon or cotton tape if you feel like your fabric is going to really stretch out. 
and you can stabilize it just to keep it give, give it some strength um, and structure at that point probably we could do that with this one but I'm going to stitch it and then I'll see I mean ideally you're meant to do it before you do this but you can do it afterwards as well because essentially you know what you, the given stretch that you're going to get when you're sewing it is not that much but over time it might stretch too much so I'm recommending that we sew this with a zigzag stitch so we're going to do a stitch length of two and a stitch width no Lisa you're just moving the needle there stitch width of 1.5 and um, 1 1.5 centimeter seam allowance or 5 eighths of an inch and away we go to the end there because I, I want to be able to press this bit open here so I've just gone up to, to that notch there just be careful because you can end up going kind of beyond where the notch is but you do need to stop level with where the notch is not kind of sort of grade off into the neckline and then here again the same I need to think about that What the zigzag is doing is that it's allowing the fabric to have a bit of give um, so that the stitching gives with the fabric so it matches it, so it has some stretch. Otherwise, what can happen is your stitching will just snap when your thread and stitching doesn't stretch with your fabric, which is no good because then you have got things falling apart. You've got holes. Um, let's have a look as well. So what we'll do, and I'll see if this needs to be stabilised. So you don't tend to want to have too much stretch there. That's why we would stabilise it. Um, I think it should be fine. It is quite stretchy, but I think it, that it's soft as well. And it, What I worry about, the other thing is, is because it sort of slopes this, and it slopes into that, if you do stabilise it, and it's a quite a kind of a finished fabric, you might end up kind of causing some sort of weird, weird it won't sit on the shoulders properly. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the risk and not bother stabilizing it. Um, right, now we're gonna press these open. Actually though, before I should press them open, rather than doing taking off and on, I might just do my side seams. You can see guys how quickly that cowl comes together. Look, so elegant so easy so let's i'll just pin my side seams and then i can do all my pressing at the same time less of a faff so on thursday last week yeah thursday we had our photo shoot for the new pattern coming out for vip club members this week um, and we managed to actually we, we we didn't shoot it on our normal models although we're trying to have more models we, we did manage to shoot it on me and another person the lovely Kyra, um, because she is very, very local to our shop and so she was able to come in without a risk of having to travel in public transport or anything. So, um, but, and I just wanted to say that we haven't got it on the usual array of sizes and shapes because of the lockdown situation. So what we have done though is we have sent a sample to our lovely model, Chantal, um, who's one of our plus size models so that she can take some nice little snaps from home of her and hers so that will be nice to be able to have that but it might not be in time for the VIP release but anyway the main thing is we've managed to do a proper photo shoot in lockdown with everybody very basically just me and the uh, photographer I kept it very simple just so you know it's not too many people together and we did it in our shop as well, in the old shop, um, which is the Lisa Comfort Home store at the moment, which of course is closed. But it's really good because it's a very big space, so you can easily socially distance. So yeah, anyway, it looks lovely. I'm very excited about it. And um, mm, 
very happy to have it in my wardrobe. Now, we're going to do the side seams, guys. The seam allowance is 1.5 centimetres or 5 eighths of an inch. Um, so, yeah, watch your inboxes. There's you in the VIP club. You'll be getting that on Wednesday. Um, we're keeping up with the zigzag here, guys. So, stitch length 2 and stitch width 1.5 sewing our side seams together. So lovely and soft this, guys. It's such a nice thing. He's almost got like a sort of warmth to it. Like, I wouldn't probably wear this in, in the warmer months because there's a sort of, I mean, it is viscose, but there's a sort of almost like a wooliness to it, which is lovely, like really soft, soft wool. Um, it's great fabric. Um, and uh, yeah, that's what gives it the texture and also gives it a bit more body. It's also quite lovely against the skin. Very nice. Oh, thanks Sharon, glad you're excited to see the new pattern. incredible that we have managed we have not missed a month in this crazy year we have not missed a month um from our pattern kind of that we sew bring our pattern every month that is incredible really better not tempt fate that and i it's like whatever we needed to do whether my dad needed to take the photos or we needed to just have me as the model i tell you the other day when i was doing it it felt like being just back in back in the beginning when it was just you know me running the business mainly um, and you know, we just used me as the model because it was cheap and easy. It felt like that. But, yeah. We, as soon as we can safely um, do something on um, photograph on another model, we will do. Whizzing through this. Whilst I'm doing that, let's talk about what we have got coming up. What have we got next week? I think it's the finishing off of the pipe cushion. And then the week after, um, the week after, so obviously I feel like I missed something we're talking about, something that sounds something's happened. Um, the week after, we have got, I think it's then we're doing the um, new pattern. So it'll be a two-parter, because we always do two sew-alongs, a two-parter sew-along for the new pattern. And then the week after that, I think it's Lois. Yes. So it's pipe cushion, new pattern, Lois. And then I think pencil skirt. I think those are all the ones that we've talked about and told everyone about. Oh. Stingy eye. Right, that is now done. We trim off all the little bitties. Lovely, and now I can press those open. Let's see if I can slide him up this way. Um, and press this. I'm going to stay standing up actually, guys, um, so that I've got better a better view of what I'm doing. Mm -mm. So yeah, we're trying to vary the kind of, as well, with the sew along, so they're not all, some of them are really quick, easy makes. Some of them are a bit more involved. And we're doing our filming tomorrow for Stitch School. Continue, we've got, we started it last week and there's a new pattern. A little hint, it's not a dressmaking pattern. I think you're all going to love it actually. Um, so that is, um, we're going to finish that this week. And then Rosie, when will that be out? I can't remember. I can't remember when that's coming out, but anyway, that will be out um, soon. And we put some new videos up on the Stitch School at the weekend. Things to do with pattern adjustments that you might need to make, deal with 
fitting issues and, um, and how to adjust the pattern. It'll be out in March, right. Exciting. Excitant. But we'll also be doing some new videos as well to support the new pattern. We're trying to do that each month too, guys, so that our patterns are supported by um, extra tutorials on Stitch School to help you with the sewing up of them or any things you might be doing to change the pattern. Um, okay. Right, we've done that. Should we do the sleeves next? I do believe that's what we need to do. Yes. Okay. Let's do the sleeves. So we'll put the top to one side and we'll do the sleeves. Um, again, you can overlock these separately or you can overlock them together. Again, it depends on the bulk of your fabric. If it's Roma Ponte, I would do them together. I mean separately. But with this, I'm just going to do them um, together it's fine it won't be too bulky so oh, we are just joining up the uh, long sides of the sleeve so it's a great um, one pattern to kind of learn about the very the simplest form of construction of a dress or of a top really because really really if we go really back to basics the construction is shoulder seams side seams sew up your sleeve so turn it into your tube and then insert your sleeve into your armhole and then hems. Yeah, really easy. I did, I made a, another one of those hacks and we put it up as a reel. So the ED and Georgie dress hack. Um, what I was trying to do, I took little snap it when I was sewing up, just little snapshots of, of how it was coming together. The idea being that um, just so that somebody learning to dress make would see kind of what was involved. So I think, Ren, if you think right at the beginning when you learn to dress making, you know, you really don't have any idea on what order things go in. Um, and so um, I thought that I, every time I sew something, I'm going to try and do that. If I'm, you know, I'm not sewing it live or whatever, if it's just something, a sample I'm making or something. Um, and then we can build up a, a repertoire of little short snappy videos of showing the kind of basic sewing steps to make up a garment. Mm -hmm. Okay, those are done. So we can now stitch those. Now the seam allowance is still a centimetre and a half or five eighths of an inch. And we still use the same ziggy zag. Just whiz down those. Oh, are we talking about Wednesdays? Big so. I feel like maybe there was talk. Maybe you're talking about something else that happened on Wednesday. But if we're talking about the big so, I loved last Wednesday. I had such a nice time. The big hand so. Um, and uh, yeah, we this week we are going to do cross stitch. But yeah, it was good. And. We took some advice that we had been saying. Oh, it was the big so, yeah. Oh, um, that people really enjoy going into the breakout rooms. So we try to give you a bit more time in the breakout rooms this time, so you can have a good chat to who's whoever else is there and do some nice sewing together. So, yeah, it's a nice little treat for us all. I think just taking a bit of time out to do a bit of slow sewing. See our friends. And it is amazing, given that we're so, so um, international. It's just so lovely to be able to bring everyone together. So that's a positive from this situation. You know me, I love having the positives of all situations. I sort of feel like there's always something we can take that's, that's you know, positive. And being able to find ways of connecting our international customer base, which we weren't particularly focused on or really, you know, didn't really know how to do that um, beyond our kind of social media and Facebook groups. Um, yeah, the sew-alongs and Zoom big hand sews have been able to kind of 
do that and it's been wonderful. And if we hadn't had the pandemic, we might not have ever done that. You know, sometimes it takes you to be pushed into a corner to come up with really good ideas. I listened to this business podcast called How I Built This. It's an American podcast. Um, the guy's called Guy Raz. Um, it's an NPR thing. And um, it's brilliant. Uh, it's like different entrepreneurs. And often, you know, not off always, but, you know, it's a film sort of hardships or whatever that forces the kind of business into a successful place or new ideas to come out. talking about proper big meetups. That would be so nice. A big meetup. Do you know I was meant to be doing a trip last summer um, to the um, to the US. I did. Some of you might remember we did a big shout out to sort of try and work out because I worked out I'd probably do three three areas. Um, and so it's like, where should I come? And I think the majority. It seemed that I needed to do a meetup in New York, New York, Houston, and then LA probably, although Portland was also coming up quite a lot. So yeah, I don't think I'll be able to do that this summer, but maybe next summer or spring over in the US, but that's not helpful to anyone who doesn't live over there. <laughs> ah. um. But yeah, I did once, once, I did one um, in New York in Mood Fabrics when I went over there for a little holiday. But I was pregnant with Jasmine and had such bad morning sickness. Um, I also went met up at, um, in Washington, D.C. Or other, I think they were in, yeah, what was it called? Stitch Sew? Gosh, I can't even remember. Terrible. Anyway, really lovely. They stock our patterns, this is embarrassing. Um, but um, she used to be the headless seamstress on Instagram. I don't know if she still is, because she always used to take photos of herself without her head, because she was like, I don't want to have my face in everything. <laughs> um, but um, anyway, we had a little meet up at hers as well, which was nice. But yeah, again, I felt like the whole time, I was sort of, Stitch Sew Shop. Thank you, Alexandria, yes. One of our lovely stockers, yes. So sorry about that. Um, but yes, and I, um, it's a beautiful shop if you're ever in the area. Oh my goodness. Um, such a lovely shop. And it's, yeah, about half an hour out of DC. Um, so that was nice. But yeah, I felt awful. I felt so poorly when I was there. And of course, you're not showing or anything at that point. I think I was about eight weeks pregnant. And then I had to pretend that everything was fine. I think when I, um, by the time I got to New York, I was feeling so rotten. I was like, oh, I've had food poisoning. Yeah. I was like, I just need to sit down again. But yeah, I got some great fabrics from there. Oh, gosh, that's, what an overwhelming shock the mood fabrics is in New York. My goodness. Hopeless for anyone who's indecisive. I think it would just be so bad. You have to go there thinking, right, I need to get this type of fabric, this type of fabric, and maybe like I'll get one thing that I'm just in case I see something that's amazing. Um, but yeah, I'd love to go back there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're just pressing, so I'm not talking, I'm telling you what I'm doing, I'm just waffling. Pressing seams open, guys, on the sleeves. Now, in the instructions, we say go ahead and, oh gosh, what am I doing? No, I'm not pressing seams open. Focus, Lisa. Pressing seams together. Because <laughs> we need to overlock it. Oh dear. Shh, focus. I'm gonna now just stop talking. Before I make a, before I make a, a proper mistake. You guys, you could just do that. You could just press it open. If you're confident that your fabric is not gonna fray, then you don't need to worry about overlocking and you don't need to worry about 
um, doing this. You can just go ahead and press them straight together. Right. Oh my gosh, it's so tangled back down there. I am going to get up my overlocker and overlock those seams together. No, Coco, don't start. Coco is, oh, you can see her. She's there. She's found a spare reel of thread. Oh. Okay. So, a little thing on. instructions it says go ahead and do your seams your hems which you can of course do if you want to but actually you don't have to do that then you can do your hem your sleeve hem you can do that after you put your sleeves in so i think i'll put my sleeves in and i'd quite like to have a go at the neckline with you so we'll see if we can get that done and then i can do the hemming the hemmings. Not that exciting. Oops. Okay. You also ideally want to give these a press to one side using your um, uh, sleeve arm as well. Actually, because I pressed them open, at least that seam is now pressed. So, let's turn the sleeves the right way around. One and two, and then we're going to get this back again. And so that's the front there. This is the back. So we need to make sure we have got the right sleeve in the right one. There we go. So I'm just going to slot that in. So it's right sides together and then you should have a nice notch marking the sleeve head at the top of the sleeve and that lines up with your shoulder seam and I always do two pins at this point because I want to keep that shoulder seam pressed open so one and two and there's no ease stitching into the sleeve head, which we sometimes do in woven fabrics because we need to be able to make it easier for us to pin it in because you've got that extra volume in the sleeve head. And you can see it there, there's more fabric here, but it's um, jersey, so it's much easier for us to ease that in so we don't need to worry about ease stitching. back notches, that pair of notches to mark the back of the sleeve and armhole. the underarm. <laughs> Strange, I always do that usually first. So just make sure your underarm is also pinned. So your seam allowance on your sleeve, if you've done what I've done and done those together, then they're just going to one side. Um, but here you might want to, you need probably have your um, 
side seams. Again, I haven't actually, I haven't overlooked my side seams, have I? In my waffling, I didn't do that. I need to do that. Let's put that out the side and let's overlook those. Oh, quickly get this back up again. Overlock these together. Because you certainly can't do it once you've put your, your sleeve in. Overlocker, guys, you can just use a big bag stitch for this. Or pinking shears, they also work. Okay, so finish that now. <laughs> so just trim that off. So if you've got seam allowances being stitched together um, with an overlock or overlock or zigzag together, then make sure that you've got. Um, them going one side and the other. So ideally, your side seams should be pressed towards the back. So the side seam needs to be going towards the back and then the underarm seam can go towards the front so that they're kind of doing that. Otherwise, you, it will just, if they're both folding the same way, then it'll be a bit bulky. But yeah, that's fine. Oops, I'm gonna do, pin them both and then I can whiz around them both. And then I'm going to try and do the neckline. Don't know if I'm going to have time. I think we're going to have to leave the neckline, aren't we? I was over, I was, I, I was, didn't manage my own expectations on this. I was like, oh, we'll be able to do this easily. I think it's the overlocking actually that's got me because normally when I make a jersey top, um, I wouldn't worry about overlocking because it doesn't fray, but I just know from this particular fabric that I've got my fear dress made out of that it has got, you no, know, it's a little bit, this bit, these bits do disintegrate a little bit, so they do really need um, overlocking, especially when they're, when you're washing it, so. <laughs> Let's go. So I've pinned my sleeve head, obviously right sides together, and now I'm going to pin the underarm. And again, thinking about the direction if you've got your seam allowances going together. So they're going, the side seam's going towards the back, and the sleeve can go towards the front. Okay. And then we just ease out that fullness. If you pin your notches together, so you've got your single notch on one side on the front and then you've got your pair of notches on the back. Like that. And then we're just gonna get rid of that fullness. And lots of pins needed for that. Oops, yeah, that's fine. So we're going to have a Valentine's theme, guys, to our big hand sew this um, on Wednesday. Let's hopefully do some pink and red stitching. I was thinking I'm going to wear some, what have I got that's Valentine's theme that I can wear? 
Have I got anything red or pink? Most definitely, yes. <laughs> I don't particularly, um, I'm not one for being big on Valentine's Day personally, but I think I am one who's big for dressing up whenever I can. <laughs> so I shall try and glam up for the occasion, guys. So I pinned it from the um, sleeve side because it's much easier to, to be seeing, so see that side on top because that's where you've got all of the um, extra um, volume um, that you need to ease in. So always sew from the sleeve side rather than the armhole side. And we're doing this with a centimetre seam allowance and using our zigzag stitch with a stitch length of two and a stitch width of 1.5. And we are um, using seam allowance 1.5, 5, five eighths of an inch, I've said that. <laughs> I've said all things, I'm taking the pins out as we get to them. And starting at the underarm. Okay. So when you get to the fullest part around the sleeve head really try and take your pins out at the last minute and you are going to have to stretch your fabric to ease that in just gently stretching it it's worse when i get like i, I get the notifications like from like a whatsapp message and that pinging up Cut it out, cut out, just so, so annoying when that happens, isn't it, guys? When we're doing a live and a live so long and it just cuts and then we have to start another one and everyone's got to bring everybody back from the other one over to that one. It's a pain. One is done. On to the next one. Starting here. Mm -hmm. So this used, I used about a metre of fabric for this, guys. I think if you use maybe just slightly more than a metre. So it's a good project for when you've got a smaller length. Obviously that does depend on the size that you're cutting, but I do think it's a great little project for using up smaller lengths of fabric that you have. And also, for just when you feel like doing a little bit of sewing or treating yourself just to a new top that isn't going to take ages and ages. And because of the cowl, I think you can wear this quite casually if you want to, but also it's really could be quite elegant for the evening. It's a very elegant neckline, isn't it? Okay guys, we're just at, that, I'm just at the last bit now. Oops, I don't want that to move away. Getting back to the underarm bit here where they meet, overlap, do a nice little reverse. And then that's that one done. So we've done our two sleeves. Essentially we have got our cowl neck top 
and we've got our hemming, but oh, I think we can have a go at the neckline. I could definitely try this on though. It's wearable already, guys. <laughs> definitely. Right, so there is our top already. How gorgeous is it in this fabric? <gasps> Lovely. Okay, so, um, so, we are um, going to, um, I'm gonna overlock the neckline. So what we need to do, overlock the neckline, and then we're gonna press it over and it's a centimeter, and then we would stick, top stitch that. And I think this is the one area where I d really don't want to do a zigzag stitch, because I just think it will look a little bit too um, heavy. So, um, I'm going to, we use a straight stitch with a long stitch length. Right, that's what I'm going to do. Right? I'm going to try and do it with you guys. Right, so first we're going to overlock. Make sure you, when you're overlocking, you, you keep that pressed open because that probably will avoid where it's going to get caught in from the overlocker. But keep it pressed. Oh no, wrong foot pedal. Keep it pressed open in case you do catch it. Try not to shave anything off, guys, if you're overlocking. Just keep keep the um, in from the edge so it's only tiny tiny little fragments of um, are getting um, overlocked away it's quite high at the back to balance it out and one thing another thing you could do if you're finding you've got super heavy um, viscose kind of fabric you could stabilize the back as well so it doesn't stretch it depends on how it's sitting on you on this it really does sit in to close so it's supporting it but Voila. Okay, now Mr. Iron needs to be brought back up. Then we can just press that in. And then we get... So I'm going to turn this inside out again. Okay. Like so. I'm going to think where I can do this. I don't really want to put it over the end because I feel like that's just going to stretch it a little bit. So I'm going to just try and do it here. I'm going to stand up though to give myself a bit better control. So we're just going to press that over by whee, a centimetre and just try and use the tip of your iron. Yeah. Um, just a tiny, tiny bit. stretch anything so the seam does show on the cowl I mean you can tuck it in you can tuck it in like that so it really doesn't show but it can kind of come out so you do want this to be you don't want this to stretch and it's because it's all kind of cut like that it can stretch at this point gone round pressed it all and now I'm going to stitch it I'm going to top stitch it and I'm going to use a stitch straight stitch I'm going to put it on stitch length three so I'm going to work from the right side so I can see where I'm going and I'm going to stitch it about 
for probably about five mils. Start at the shoulder seam. I'll do that rather than starting at the centre back. Start at the shoulder seam and away we go. And just try not to let to let it stretch at all. Oh, it is not sewing. Why is it not sewing? I can't possibly have run out of thread underneath. Let's have a look. No, oh, whatever happened, he just snapped. That's strange. So yeah, we try not to stretch this because if you stretch it, you're going to then end up with puckered fabric and we don't want that. That will not look like an elegant neckline. So sewing it around, you could use the edge of your foot if you want, because that's less than a centimetre. Um, but keep it no more than seven millimetres or so. And just very delicately handling it. So the reason why I can use a straight stitch on this neckline at this point is because the neckline is so big, even though it doesn't sort of look massive, but you've got a lot, of, you've got a big opening here to get your head in. So you don't need to stretch. You know, if you think about something like our Bilberry t-shirt, which is like a classic t-shirt, round neck t-shirt, you need the stretch to get your head in. So the thread has to stretch as well, the stitch line has to stretch, not the thread, the stitch line has to stretch, so you're going to have to um, use a zigzag for that, but for this, it does not need to stretch to put it on and off. where I began, nice and meet, meeting up point, and uh, overlapping a little bit, a little bit of a reverse, and then that's it. Trim those threads off. Okay, it's very hard for you guys to see, but it is essentially now, apart from being hemmed, it is done. I can't, I can't, can't be bothered to go and take this off so let's let's put it on top a cowl on top of a cowl that's because that's gonna look good <laughs> just to show you this is what we've done in an hour because <laughs> the drape I mean this is really wasn't one of one of my best ideas was it <laughs> the drape is very different See, it's slightly lower in this. Okay, I promise to take a better photo of me in it when it's properly finished. But there we go, guys. A cowl neck top. Um, or you could have been making the dress in the same time. It's kind of stuck to there. A cowl on a cowl! Um, so all I need to do is the hemming of the sleeves. Um, you might also, it's up to you, but you might, I find with the long, if I'm making it as a top, I quite like them being quite wide. But if you're making a dress, you might want to make those narrower. It's up to you because they're quite straight. Right, guys, um, that's it for this week for our sew-alongs. Uh, thank you for all the lovely comments. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, so we will be back next week for the finishing off of our pipe cushion, and we will be back at 6.30 on Wednesday for our um, big hand sew. And I will no doubt be popping up on Instagram as well. So thank you um, to everyone who joined today. Um, if you're watching this after the live, if you can't find the links, they'll be in the description box below. We'll pop links to everything in then. And I'll hopefully see some of you soon. Bye, guys.